Yeah, well, all right, all right, all right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast recaps, reviews. What's the other one? Reacts. 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 Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 6. And Brian, it what... yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's it's going to be soon, right? Two more episodes, we hope, after this. We hope, yeah. yeah. And Brian, what is our episode title this week? This is uh, Whistle Speak. That's right. right. Yeah. Whistle Speak. A very odd name, but it is... Uh, it does lend itself to something that happens in the show. So, yeah, it's just an awkward thing to say. Whistle speak. Very cumbersome word. It is. Yeah. But before we get started, guys, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Give us a like, you know, leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on. It's really important to mention that, you know, these by hitting the subscribe button, it costs you nothing. So please, it helps us out a lot moves us up in the echelon of the youtube world and uh yeah so please help us out and hit that button thank you so much we will not bother you anymore about that today <laughs> anywho hey, is my lighting working by the way should i change this this highlight on my face ah you're all good man okay. i got color all over me just checking because it's, it's a quick change it's one thing that i noticed earlier but i didn't change but whatever yeah, I don't. Anyway, think that. onward. That's right. We start out with uh, Stamets, Tilly, and Burnham analy analyzing the vial of liquid they found in the last episode. They find it is distilled water, basically, and uh, are at a loss on what that means. So uh, Burnham has them find uh, worlds about eight hundred years ago that have extreme droughts and just basically need water. And uh, <clears throat> she gets taken off into that uh what's it called the infinity room the uh, the white space yeah the old infinity room uh yeah. and she gets the name of the scientist from dr kovich in there uh which seems to help them get further in finding out you know where they need to go because uh they they what no two side they had two scientists left who they hadn't got a clue from they knew who the other three were so getting those other two names helped I don't know about you, but I, I totally got get a vibe that as soon as the meeting's over, the doc is going to go back to like an alien autopsy type thing. Like he's just going to turn around and just going to open up and there's going to be like a dead alien body on a table. Yeah, <laughs> he, he does. Like give love up. <laughs> he does give off that vibe for sure. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. He has this new old stock of fucking real legal pads. Right. Unreplicated, mind you. Just to point out how resourceful. We saved these for some reason. Jeez, the guy's got <laughs> issues, doesn't he? But uh, yeah, so Burnham decides Doctor Krill is the most likely responsible for this clue, and Stamets, Tilly, and Burnham brainstorm a little bit with Zora and find one planet that meets their criteria: the planet Halemno. That's a cumbersome word too. It is a lot of cumbersome words. So the uh, the Denobulans built these large rain-making towers that look, look like natural geological rock formations to make uh, the planet hospitable for life. Because uh, it's like a, the, the planet is like was a desert planet, or kind of still is a desert planet. Has uh, become one again. Yeah. Yes, mostly. You know, all but this one spire is still working. Right. Uh, so... Uh, they say it's got a low grade shield that keeps the dust storms out of the inhabited area too. So Rainer asked why it's made to look like it <clears throat> was created out of a mountain. And Burnham explains about the pre-war and pre-industrial civilization that lives there. And the Denobulans didn't want to contaminate them. You know, and we get yet another invocation of the prime directive. Yes. Yeah. A lot of prime directive stuff. Um, I like hearing the Denobulans being talked about. I would love to see yeah. the Denobulans. Dr. Flox was one of my favorite characters on Enterprise. Right. I absolutely loved him. But um, <clears throat> Tal finally gets some bridge time, thanks to Rainer, and she's not dealing. And this is where I first heard uh, 
that that they he referred to her as they they because th- when I first watched this, I thought he was referring to Tilly and 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 her or something. But it occurred to me it was just referring to Tao, and I'm like, these here we go again. So uh, it's not the first time it's happened. It's the first time you've recognized it. It is a thing that people can do. Uh, you know, one word can mean many things. Uh, I don't have so much an issue with it personally. Oh, it's stupid. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. rid- ridiculous, man. I mean, I, I find it really annoying because I- obviously I'm thinking they're talking about more than one person. And it's just like, pick a fucking gender. You can be gay, straight, and still be a gender. It's just, it, it's beyond stupid. And I'm sorry if it offends you and I'm running people off. I, I don't need you. I really don't because it's that fucking stupid. I don't need you in my life. I, it's annoying that we have to put up with this in society for such a small, small, minute amount of people that this is such a big, annoying thing. I don't. I don't get it personally. I don't see it as a big annoyance. I just see it as like, you know, learning a new word like Riz or, you know, just, you know, mid or, you know, things changing. I'm I'm not that I am kind of an old curmudgeon on some things, but that's one of them. I haven't quite gotten there yet. When does it stop though, man? I mean, honestly, Never. Hopefully, that's the plan. It never stops. The world never stops turning. Once we die, it keeps going. That's the plan. Yeah, well, I just hope they just don't start referring to themselves as animals. I know there's ones that already are, but I mean, when they try and make it a a thing where we all have to suffer through it, it's just ridiculous, man. I'm over it. I'm over it. Of course, there is an unusual energy surge. Energy surge. I like my air bunnies. Right. That was a quote around the tower, of course, and they can't be beamed into the tower. This is another Shocking fucking rider device that I'm annoyed with as well, since I'm since I'm already annoyed. Uh, they're getting they're overusing this one. It's one that I understand you have to put in there. You got to keep them from, you know, just being able to do things too easily. But there's also not being creative in how you do that. And that's this. Be more creative, like something fucking happened to the transporter this time instead of they just fucking have a shield there. Yeah. Or it's some energy source. Give me a break, y'all. Come on. I don't know. Here's another thing. It's not something. It's a weird thing that we haven't seen it bought up before more often, right? We we have seen it in the past. We have seen it as a writer device in the past and other franchises and whatnot. But you would think that given the eras that we've spanned of uh, Starfleet, right, you would have, we would have encountered more of a variety of reasons as to why they cannot teleport here or there, right? Yeah. Like the, the teleporters would work in normal use, whatever, but we are in these extraordinary situations, so... You know, just tap into that, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just be creative with it. They, they just use the same old shit over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, titles come up. And then when we get back from the title sequence, Burnham chooses Tilly of all freaking people to go on this away mission with her. Boy, this this one just really tapped on a nerve with me. <laughs> it's all, well, all it's heavy of- on some of your favorite characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it is, it's, it's really got some of the most loathed characters in here and especially considering, uh, later on, we'll get to it. So, um, we return to Burnham listening to whistling and Tilly walks in and asks what she's listening to. And Burnham tells Tilly it's all, uh, it's the way the inhabitants speak to each other, but they just, they don't speak just in whistles. They also speak normally you know, in normal uh, words like we do. This is just a specialized thing they do. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, well, it's good for calling over long distances, right? Definitely good in that regard. Um, And Burnham says that they recognize three distinct genders. I didn't catch that the first time. I caught that. Really? They even kind of like 
parsed out the wording to make sure you caught it. <laughs> well, I move around a lot in the house yeah. while we're watching TV, so I probably got up and just missed that part. But uh, I put in the notes here, man. This is just, the, again, this is going back to it. It's a major reason I can't abide discovery, man. It is absolutely tainted with this extreme left agenda bullshit. And I don't mind a little bit of it here and there, but man, when you just scream agenda, when you're Disneying me, Disneying, that's hard to say. Yeah. When you're Disneying me, then I, I tend to get really fucking prickly and real bitchy about it quick because I'm over it. Did I mention that? I'm over it. A couple of times. Yeah. This for me kind of falls into the uh, Doctor Who being trans area. Like, yeah. I don't mind. It makes sense. I'm fine with it. I understand how it affects like old time fans, and you know they're they're you know ticked off about certain things. But I'm like, yeah, uh, we are in other universes. Why would why would there not possibly be more than two genders? No, I mean they're you know I. I mean, you're right. It is part of the agenda, but at the same time, it's Star, Star Trek, Star Wars, even like but anything out human. there. You know, we're you can human. We only have more two. than two genders. <laughs> we're human, and we only have two genders. Yeah. So I don't relate to any other things. That's what I was saying last week about how they were trying to get us to relate to Rainer. How could I? He's a fucking alien. Right. That's but the you point. Do. <laughs> you do relate to him more than anybody else. I relate to him because he's a human playing a, playing an alien, and, and he's basically just playing a human. For lack and of that's it. kind of the point I'm making. Uh, one thing that uh, Discovery continues to do, which I, I would say it's probably TOFs, uh, but, you know, they were kind of limited, but TNG really did, didn't do a lot to improve on it, and that is, you know, the shape and form of aliens, right? Mm -hmm. Like, most of what we're dealing with are, you know, people, obviously, because that's all we have to work on the sets. But they're still a, a lot like people, right? The aliens. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe if the aliens were a little bit more out there, it would it would make more sense, yeah? Yeah. Okay. We used to get that with, like, uh, Species 8, 4, or 7, whatever the hell their name was. Um, you know, and it's like all the touchy feely shit too, man. I mean, it's just, this was like the great experiment and I'm glad it's over or almost <laughs> over. I really am. I will, I will not miss discovery one fucking bit. Yeah. I think they're going to concentrate everything that they were trying to do here to prodigy. Is that what it's called? The, the kind of. Not quite UA, or well, I'm sorry, not quite YA, but not quite kids. Yeah, uh, Star Trek thing, the tween show, maybe. I don't know. They should. Yeah, that's where it needs to be. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I want kids being subjected to that crap. They Did already are. Baby? But anyway, they. Did uh, you make a baby? I'm sorry. What? Did you make a baby? Did I make a baby? Did you make a baby? No. Okay, what's the matter then? <laughs> right? Yeah, I still have to live with these fuckers. Oh, Jesus. Ah, so they write Booker out of the episode by saying he's useless right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Um, and Dr. Colber is on his quest to find out what's bothering him. So, uh, <clears throat> Tilly and... Uh, I'm sorry, Burnham and Tilly are down on the planet now, and they meet up with some locals. They end up helping this old lady using this sound. Using sound. Man. I'm sorry, I want to back up. Can we can we back up to the sure. doctor not just like, you know, going down into, into like the isolation wing of the medical bay, right? Because they've got to have that. Why would they not have that? I'm taking some ayahuasca or whatever in a, in a little injector thing. Yeah. Popping it in, laying down and figuring some stuff out for himself. Yeah. You can see, I didn't even want to talk about him. I just gave him a mention because that's yeah. basically the whole story is just him trying to f do this stupid spiritual quest. He's on. I mean, literally a, a thread of story that matters, not one freaking bit. And I could do without. 
There's a lot of that in this show, though. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they help this old lady out using sounds, and they meet uh, Ovaz, the man who discovered how to use the sound to push dust out of their lungs, and probably other uses for it too. Right. Um, and he's one of the priests of the summit. And until he introduces his daughter, I say daughter, Rava, to Burnham and gives her some info on the summit. Uh, these are pretty much the main players in the rest of the episode, by the way. Right. Um, Burnham has to figure out a way to get into the summit, and Rava tells Burnham she can get in if she completes the journey of the Mother Compere, a race and endurance test. Which is why I think it's ridiculous that they have Tilly out here now. I hadn't gotten to it yet, but now we know there's a race coming. Yeah, Tilly being the yeah, come on, man. And the fact that she yeah, we'll get there. Uh so they find out that uh from Tal and Rainer that they are not one, but four more towers for a total of five. And uh they start the race and a lot of the villagers turn out uh to run too, as they were inspired by Burnham and Tilly. So uh, Rava also runs with the group. And a quick interruption. We're not going to explain it here, but at this point, if your uh, little invisible klaxons haven't gone off in the back of your head, then you're not paying attention, right? I don't know. What are we? What are you referring to? Concerning the race, if you don't have like the the alarms going off in the back of your head for some reason that you don't know why, then then there's something wrong with you. In my opinion. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't put it better. Burnham thinks she uh, she sees some mutated fungus as they're walking along in this, or running along, I should say, until he's kind of doing that fucking run around thing. Weird. Uh, she sees some mutated fungus and somehow <laughs> connects the dots that there might be a control panel nearby. I thought that was a, a real stretch, man. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, like, to to be perfectly honest, like, you find this one spot of, like, mutated fungus, and it's it could have it could have expressed in so many different ways. But, I mean, the same shit was with the water. It's just, it's how these people want to write the story, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's it sucks. Yeah. Let's just yeah. be honest. <laughs> um, so Burnham and Tilly split up, and Burnham disqualifies herself to look for the control panel while uh, Tilly continues the race. And, you know, again, how ridiculous is it that they picked Tilly for this episode to be the one who wins this race? I say it's ridiculous, but I guarantee you their thought is, well, she's the underdog. It'll just be that much better. Look at it from a leftist perspective. Uh, Burnham finds the control panel and with Discovery's help, gets it working. No thanks to Tal's insecurities. All right. She just... Cannot handle that she's up there on the bridge getting asked to do stuff. Um, Till he ends up winning the race with Rava as she goes back and puts water in her bowl so she can continue. Surprise, so you surprise. cannot finish this race. You cannot win the race. You can't finish with an empty bowl. And I'm right. calling bullshit on this too. Because Till he goes back, Rava spills all her water out. Till he goes back before she, I guess, crosses the imaginary finish line. Yeah. Um, and adds I mean, water. It is apparently pretty imaginary, right? Yeah. And uh, so she adds water to uh, Rava's bowl, helps her up, and they go on to finish the race for like five steps. Yeah. I mean, it's so fucking ridiculous because, I mean, she should have just been disqualified, right? Yeah. Out. I guess. But somehow they just managed to allow it. The referees said they'll allow it. And uh, Kelly and Rava end up entering the summit and Tilly realizes that they're going to be sacrificed. Uh, Rava shows Tilly these ancient numbers on the wall and uh, it's supposed to soothe them when they recite whatever it says on the wall, right? It's like a soothing yeah. wall. Uh, <clears throat> so now they got to figure out a way to get him out of there. And Discovery is trying to help, but they cannot beam anyone out of there, yet they can beam Burnham into a control room right next to the freaking entrance. Surprise. What the fuck, guys? Anyway, Rainer says they can't beam her in while Ovis is in the room. And Burnham insists that they beam her in and they'll deal with the prime directive issue later. Yep. Which we still... Well, we'll get there. I was going to say we still don't know if that became an issue. <laughs> right. I'll just say it now. The the end of the episode, we nobody gets said shit to yet. 
Um, it'll come up at the end, I'm sure. It'll be like, you're going to be court-martialed. Right, yeah, it'll be some dumb bullshit when it's all said and done. Except we were going to do it, but now you save the universe again, so you guys are all good in our book. How, how awesome would it be for them to just end on one episode where uh, Discovery gets raided, basically, like swatted, and everybody gets hauled off to be court-martialed? How about they just all just die in a massive towering flame uh, that's just not as fun man well they got to get killy out of there because i don't want to see her in another show yeah and you know i have my doubts on whether i will watch or could stand to watch uh that starfleet academy show one and if it comes out yeah, i just think it'd be great for them to end on like them being raided for the prime directive breach and like everybody going off to be court martialed. That's the end of this series. <laughs> I can accept that in lieu of uh, a towering inferno. Right. So <clears throat> Burnham beams in and tries to convince Ovis that he must open the door. Uh, it fails and she starts whistling a song that only Rava and her mother knew. This convinces Ovis that uh, he and he opens the door. Right. Dr. Colbert and his team beam in to save Rava, who was unresponsive. Tilly, unfortunately, was fine. And Colbert saves her, of course. And Tilly shows Burnham the numbers that were on the wall, on the soothing wall. And that one looks just like the markings on the vial of water. And the number represents the summit from which the clue resides, which ends up being Tower 5. And they were in 3, I believe, weren't they? Mm, I can't recall. I think that's what they said. weren't in five. Hopefully yeah, they, they weren't in that. Uh, we see the Booker has been spending the whole freaking episode playing a really shitty video game for its for their for their day for sure. Yeah, um, it's like vector graphics, a la asteroids. It's it did look a whole lot like asteroids. Yeah, asteroids and or Tempest or the old original Star Wars game, any of those old uh, vector graphics stuff. Man, it was wild. But uh, Burnham and and. I'll say it just so y'all know. He and the doc had this long, stupid conversation. Another another pointless conversation with the doc. This whole doctor thing could have been pulled out of the episode completely. Yep. Nothing good came out of it. Um, Burnham and Tilly put the new piece of the map in place, and Burnham says there was a metal card with a Betazoid marking on it. And uh, Stamets is analyzing it to see where they go next. And I wonder if it will be Betazoid. I hope it is. Be they've, been, they've been talking about Betazoid from the very beginning of the season. It's like, let's talk about that all up front, and that'll be the last freaking thing we do. We've had some interaction with the Betazoids, but you know, less so than a lot of others. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, there's room for it. Yeah. Um, Tilly and Burnham talk about the what the message could have been for this episode, and ultimately they decide it's basically just to be responsible. You know, once you do get the right thing, yeah, once you get this technology, you can do some serious shit. So don't fuck right. up. Um, they get a message that the USS Lockerer has found Maul and Lock, and Admiral Vance requests that they Discovery jump immediately to that location. They jump and scene. Da da. How you like that, y'all? That was that was the high point version. Hopefully, yeah. we're going to do the rest of our uh, recap videos like this. Just do the high points. I was getting a little too long with all the scene by scene breakdowns. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can appreciate that too. But anyway, I think it goes without saying that this episode annoyed the shit out of me. We failed last week to put stars on the episode. We just got out and didn't say you're too giving sharp. this one two, maybe. I'll give us a straight up one, dude. The first I mean, one. I would be willing to give it one. You know what? This really talking about this and this episode specifically reminds me of uh, is why I don't like the series, right? Like uh, this whole episode, instead of everything that they did, could have been them going to all of these different pillars, right? And yeah. like activating them, encountering whatever difficulties there. Just like etc. Et um, Just like and, and there's there's so much fertile ground that they they kind of like raise attention to, but do absolutely nothing with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And instead, we're sitting here with this different kind of bridge. We're telling the Disneyfication story, 
in the disnification scenes and the you know all this other stuff i'm i don't know uh i i would i would say yeah one star is completely understandable yeah and i guess we do do half stars i guess i could have given it a half star if i wanted to or no stars even but i mean yeah um yeah, I don't. I don't think anything really was furthered in this episode. It was barely a good episode enough for them to get the clue. Honestly, yeah. there there just was no substance to this episode. I thought. Well, and they've also figured out who they're giving screen time to, right? Yeah, uh, there is pretty much no surprise as to who you're going to see on screen. Uh, you know, none of the interesting multicultural experiences that we've had throughout other star treks right maybe that's why i don't like this one either too because you have all these bridge crew that we don't really fucking know nothing about and i know y'all i I don't like too much into it but i mean some character development's fine but i just don't want to see scenes between these motherfuckers talking about their feelings every time there's other scenes that can be had like a tng was with the poker scenes and stuff like that that kind of stuff works. What would well. TNG be without Reggie, man? Right? I don't know. It's a pretty Im- important, pivotal side character, right? Yeah. Um, and, and it, it's, uh, I don't know, it's not re- really been repeated, but you see a lot more character development, a lot more diaspora and whatnot in everything outside of this i would say i maybe not so much an enterprise but you definitely saw it like in tos tng ds9 mm-hmm. even uh janeway's crew like yep. i don't know it, it just feels kind of empty it, it feels like the whole uh you know trans agenda stuff i you know i hate to agree with you on that but um you know that's just because it's not a trans agenda it's just Somebody to someone hot to steaming pile and wants to put these stickers on it so it will sell. Right. No, that's that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And and it's true. If Brian says what he just said, then you know it's noticeable. Yeah. So, you know, it does that kind of thing doesn't bother him. And for the most part, it doesn't bother me either until I start feeling like you're trying to do something. And then I get annoyed with it. You know, sprinkle it in, like I've always said, like a chef, just the right amount of ingredients is what you need don't well, i mean it. it's it, it ties to the same thing that we keep saying about this is that the writing isn't there and so they keep trying to fill it in and this is one of the things they try to fill it in but yep so that's it i see no further reason to talk about this anymore <laughs> yeah, so same. I, yeah we'll see you soon uh for the podcast on friday well saturday for y'all but uh yeah we'll see you in a maybe couple- maybe be recording it at a little different time. We'll see my yeah. week's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. you guys probably won't notice at all, but yeah, we'll Hopefully. get it. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you in a week for episode seven of discovery where hopefully it gets a little better than this. Anyway, they're tied. They got to start wrapping things up. So hopefully. it's going to be closer to the end. So it's instantly better, right? Yes. It usually is. <laughs> right. I mean, usually it's, um so yeah with that in mind guys thank you so much and remember as always be excellent to each other and brian and i will see you on the flip side peace out everybody